Hi, I'm John Lee from UltimatePaperMache.com and I've got the armature done for a gnome that I'm building. I'm using for my inspiration this book on gnomes. I've had it for years. I absolutely love this book. I really like these images on the inside, the drawings where the gnomes are helping out the animals. But there are some that are a little bit bigger where we can find some. Here's some here. And so I use this as inspiration when I was building the pattern and I'm going to obviously um, look at it very closely when I'm putting the final coating on there and when I sculpt his face. He's part two of my waterproof outdoor sculpture experiment. Part one was in my last video. That was the pumpkin that I made. The pumpkin's been outside for two or three weeks now. We got four inches of rain one night. Uh, it's snowed once. It, the temperature has been down to, I think, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So he's really, you know, been through a lot, and yet it is still hard as a rock. So I'm really feeling positive about this whole experiment that I'm doing. All the sculpting, of course, no matter what you're making, the, the sculpting itself is going to happen in the armature portion, which I'm going to show you in this video for this guy. And then whether it can go inside or outside depends on what we put over the armature. So if you want to make a house gnome, maybe for Christmas and put him on your mantle, you can use my pattern and you can use all the instructions that you're going to see in this video. Just put paper mache or paper mache clay over it then you won't have to watch the next video where I'm going to show you how I'm putting the hard coat on there. And, and also I'm going to be using some epoxy clay uh, to build some really nice old man features for his face. For that part, if you're making a house gnome, just go ahead and use the air dry clay recipe on my website. So this is, even though I'm doing an outdoor experiment for waterproof sculpting doesn't mean you have to you can make yours for inside he would just be absolutely adorable standing right next to your christmas tree or just print the pattern smaller and put him up on your mantle that would be really cool too now let's go ahead and get started i want to show you how i'm doing the armature portion of it and then like i said we'll finish him up in the next one I started out by drawing a pattern. You can download the pattern if you'd like to follow along and make your own gnome. I'm going to put that up on my website for free at ultimatepapermache.com slash gnome. Now I printed my pattern on full sheet labels because it, it's just so much easier than using a glue stick to put it onto the cardboard. If you do use glue stick, which it works okay, but it doesn't stick as well as the labels and we really don't want the whole front half of your armature falling off. So make sure that you also use some scotch tape or some masking tape right around the edges to make sure that it's stuck on really good. You don't really need to do that if you're using the labels. Now the leg patterns slot into the body pattern so that the armature will stand up by itself and that part worked really well but I didn't draw the slots to exactly fit the size of the cardboard. That would have been nice, <laughs> but I put the pattern together pretty fast. And besides, it was really easy to just go ahead and cut one slit right there where it belongs uh, using the pattern to show how long it needs to be, and then test it to see whether or not another piece of cardboard will actually fit into that slot. If it doesn't, just, um, just cut it a little bit wider. I had pretty thin cardboard, so I cut slots that were a whole lot thinner than the ones I actually drew on the pattern. You want to test your own too. Now the pattern did change a little bit when I was building my gnome. So the pattern that you're seeing in the video is not going to be exactly the same as the one that you're going to see when you download your copy. Um, the, the part that changed was right around the shoulders. I thought that the arms were going to stick on the same way basically that the legs do and it really didn't work. And so I changed it, but I'll explain how that changed when I get to that part of the armature. Now the hat is taped to the top. Um, it just matched the two hatch marks that you see there at the top of the head. If you print it the same size as the PDF pattern, then it's going to be about 18 inches high. Obviously, just print it smaller or bigger if you want a gnome that's a different size than that. And don't attach the arms quite yet. That's going to happen later. So now it's time to turn on the hot glue gun, and then we're going to just uh, very loosely crumple some foil and attach it to the cardboard with some hot glue. You want to leave the foil pretty loose right now because that way you can change the shapes after the foil is glued on. It's a little bit more like 
like sculpting with clay if you do it that way. Now, if I was actually sculpting with clay, I probably wouldn't start at the bottom and just work my way up. But this time it seemed like the easiest way to do it, uh, especially since um, if you get the bottom of the feet nice and flat right from the start, then it'll continue to stand up by itself. And the hot glue and foil does make the armature a lot stronger, especially right at that attachment point for the legs. Now, whenever I'm using this kind of pattern that goes on the inside of a sculpture, I don't cover up the edges of the pattern. And the whole point of having a pattern in there is to know right before you start that the proportions are going to be the same as they were on your original drawing. Now this pattern is different from most of my four-leggeds because it's standing up on two feet. It's just a different kind of creature. I've never done a cardboard pattern for a figure sculpture before, so that's why I had to do a little bit of fiddling around to get it to work. Now I did add the mustache and the beard and I put a little nubbin that's going to be a placeholder for his final nose. But the rest of his face is just an indentation at this point because I really want to use the epoxy clay for all of his face. And now we're getting to the part where the pattern that you download from my website is not going to be exactly the same as what you're seeing on this little guy. And that's this part right here. This is the little bulge that is at his shoulder. You don't want any foil to cover that. Those, that's not part of his body, actually. It was, it was, well, on mine, when I first started out, it had those little slits where the arms were supposed to attach and it really, really didn't work because you couldn't position them correctly. So what we've done instead, and it oh, looks a little bit ratty now because I've been working on it for so long, but you can see that this is where that little bulge is. And it's not sticking out because I folded it back and hot glued it directly onto the body piece. Now it needs to be behind, you know, you fold it backwards because the shoulder is behind the center point. Um, where the pattern is, is the center point on his body. You want his arm to be attached behind that part. So you just fold it back and this is where the arm is going to go. My arm, this is his, what is it, his right arm. And I've put some foil on the outside. And I've also put foil on the inside, but leaving this area here without any foil at all because I want it to fit fairly tight onto this spot here. It's still going to need some more foil behind it to make everything, you know, flow correctly. A little bit more sculpting is going to be needed with the foil. But that's basically where it goes, right over this spot. Now if you want to just cut this off right at those, at that fold line, you could and just eyeball it. That's okay. I just thought it was really handy to know uh, where a shoulder goes. And now we just need to kind of figure out where we want it. Um, in my drawing, I have it, this one is folded up and kind of uh, over his beard, so I think we're going to put it right there. He's going to put some hot glue on it. I am going to use some more foil here because you can see that it doesn't fit anymore. We need to do some sculpting to get that all uh, arranged properly. And I'm almost at the end of my roll. This was 75 square feet of uh, aluminum foil. I usually buy it in a really big carton at Walmart. I think it comes in 200 square feet and it lasts for a lot longer. I'm just fitting this up in here just to, to see if I can get it to go. Okay. 
Got to be really careful with hot glue. It kind of scares me. I used it a lot, and it still scares me <laughs> because I have a tendency to put my finger in it. I don't know why I do that. Using foil for sculpting is not as intuitive as using clay, but you do get used to it after a while. And I'm just smoothing it off with this little wooden tool. This is kind of handy. I put a, a little bit of foil right around the edge of his ears, just to fill him out just a little bit. But I think he's really close to being done. You can put as much or as little detail on this guy as you want to, and it's still going to, no matter at what style you choose, it's still going to come out really cool. Now this is a really good place for me to stop at this point. The armature itself is done, but it does need to get that hard coat on it because I'm going to put mine outside. And in order to do that, I need to first put on some masking tape. Um, and completely cover it because after that comes a layer of plaster cloth and plaster cloth just slides off of aluminum foil. So if you're making a paper mache clay house gnome instead of an outside gnome like I am, uh, you don't need the masking tape. You will need the masking tape if you're going to cover them with paper strips and paste because again it doesn't like to stick to foil. Most things don't. So I'm going to set him aside now. I'm going to go to the DIY store and buy myself some masking tape. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how I'm putting that hard coat on there. I'll put his face on there with some epoxy clay that I got. And, um, and then we get to paint him and put him outside. Now, I'm hoping that the next video doesn't take me too long to get it out, but I, I never really know how long these things are going to take. So if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the little bell notification thingy. And that way you'll get an email to let you know when the next video comes out and we can get this guy finished up. If you'd like a, an easier project and want something a little bit faster for the inside of your house, um, we do have a video for this little guy. This is a Swedish gnome. He's called a Tomte. I probably mispronounced it. This is a Norwegian gnome and it's called a Nissa. So they live next door, but they look a little bit different. So if you want to see the video for this one, I'm going to put it right here. Um, and also, in case you want to make your gnome out of paper mache clay, I'll put that right there. Now hopefully I'll get that new video up really soon, but in the meantime, go make something and then come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.